From AmazingAvenue.com, headline, Top 25 Mets Prospects for 2024 at number 3, infielder Luis Angel Acuna. Now, before we end this video, you just hit that subscribe button so you know exactly what's going on with the Mets and their prospects and their minor league system. When the 2018-2019 National Rookie si Signing Period began on July 2nd, 2018, the Texas Rangers gave Jose Rodriguez, a 16-year-old Venezuela catch, a $2 million signing bonus the highest they gave that year. Following his bonus, they gave out roughly similar bonuses to a handful of infielders. $425 to Venezuelan Luis Angel Cunha, $385,000 and $300,000 to Dominican infielders John Mejia and Junior Panaguaya. Acuna's brother, Ron Jr., was considered one of the best prospects in baseball, if not the best. Just prior to his brother signing a contract, he made his major league debut with the Braves it was hitting 265 with five home runs, two stolen bases, and 29 games with the Braves as the ink was drying. Atlanta signed the eventual 2018 National League Rookie of the Year and 2023 National League MVP with just $100,000. Owing to concerns about his size, 5'10", 160 pounds, and a lack of standout carrying tools at the time. While the natural inflation of salaries and bonuses thanks to that of pro profitability, of baseball and the vast sums of cash teams were generated certainly had an impact on Luis Angel Cunha receiving roughly four times as much as his older brother. The Acuna name clearly carried some weight. When Ronald Jr. signed it seemingly did not. Their father Ronald Acuna Sr. was a farmhand primarily for the Mets and for a single season apiece the Blue Jays and the, and the Brewers. He had a cumulative 282 over eight seasons in the late 90s and early 2000s. Progressing as high as double A. His progression as a baseball player did not inspire scouts and evaluators to believe Ronald Jr. was headed for greatness. Despite being small and less dynamic than his older brother, Luis and Luis and Hell benefited from his success. The Rangers assigned Acuna to their Dominican Summer League team in 2019. The 17-year-old appeared in 15, 51 games and had an impressive 342 in 51 games. 11 doubles, 3 triples, 2 home runs, 17 doubles and 23 attempts, and 34 walks to 26 strikeouts. He missed the 20 season because of the cancellation of the minor league season, but scouts and evaluators came away impressed watching him during the instructional league at the end of the year. When minor league baseball returned in 2021, Acuna was assigned to the Down East Wood Ducks, Texas Low A affiliate and the, and the Low A East. Appearing in 111 games, he hit 266 with 15 doubles, 3 triples, 12 homers, 44 stolen bases, and 55 attempts. In 2022, the 20-year-old began his season with the Hickory Craw Crawdads, the Rangers' high A affiliate in the South Atlantic League. An injury caused him to miss roughly the first month of the season, but when he returned to the field, he hit just like a man on a, miss on a mission. From the beginning of May until the end of July, he appeared in 53 games and hit 319 with 10 doubles, 8 home runs, 28 stolen bases, and 34 attempts. At the beginning of August, he was promoted to double A Frisco and ended his season there, hitting 224 in 37 games. After the season, he did yeoman's work in the Arizona Fall League and stood out to scouts and evaluated as one of the best all round players in the league. All in all, the infielder had 271 in 95 games with 17 doubles, 11 homers. 41 stolen bases and 50 attempts. Solidifying himself not only as one of the better prospects in the Texas Rangers farm system, but one of the best in it. While the infield struggled at times, struggled a bit upon his promotion to triple A Frisco in 2022, that was not the case in 23. He began the year with the Rough Riders and, and threw 84 games hit 315 with 25 doubles, 2 triples, 7 home runs, 42 stolen bases and 47 attempts. On July 30th, the Mets traded Max Scherzer to the Rangers along with $35 million in cash and received Acuna in, a, in return. He was assigned to Double A Binghamton and appeared in 37 games for the Roma Ponies. Heading 243 with three doubles, two home runs, 15 stolen bases, and 20 attempts, and 15 walks to 30 strikeouts. He had an injury scare at the end of the season, getting hit by a pitch in the head by Somerset Patriots right handed Zach Messenger in mid September. But left the game on his own power and even played in a handful of games 
the end of the season. All in all, Cooney appeared in 121 games for both Double A Bing and Double A teams and had a cumulative 294, 28 doubles, two triples, nine home runs, 57 stolen bases, and 67 attempts, and 52 doubles to 106 strikeouts. At the plate, Luis Angel stands square, holding his hands high and angling his bat up against perpendicular to the ground. He uses a moderate leg kick and has a swing very reminiscent of his brother's. Unlike Ronald Jr., who hit 337 with 41 home runs, 73 stolen bases, Luis and Hal Cooney's game seems more closely related to his, their cousin, Alcides Escobar, who had 258 with 45 home runs, 178 stolen bases over the course of his 13 year career. He hits the ball hard and has more raw power than his 5'8 frame would suggest. Now, I mentioned about Escobar. Escobar was the shortstop on that Kansas City Royal team that beat the Mets in 2015. But, but on Hells, saps most of his potential power by hitting the ball on the ground or shooting the ball to the opposite field too often. He has enough high hand, high, he has enough hand-eye coordination, and or shooting the ball to the opposite field too often. He has enough high eye, <laughs> he has enough hand-eye coordination to result in solid bat the ball skills but needs to improve his swing decisions to improve his overall offensive output. While spraying the ball around the field and relying on speed to leg out hits against minor league defenses has worked thus far against better competition in the majors. This modus operandi is unlikely to work. He also can get a little aggressive and unnecessarily expand the zone, especially against breaking balls, resulting in unnecessary strikeouts or poor contact. Speed is Luis Angel's carrying tool. He is a plus runner who was successful on 57 of 67 stone base attempts in 2023 and has at least 40 stone bases to his credit in each of his three full seasons. For his career, he's 158 for 194, an 81% success rate stateside. He is 141 for 171, an 82% state uh, success rate. In addition to his, it helping him on the base pass, Acuna is an excellent defender as a result. He's rangy, has clean actions, and a solid arm of both short and second. Most scouts and evaluators find his reaction times and first steps a bit slow for shortstop, find him a better defensive player at second, but he's far from a liability. The Texas Rangers experiment with him in center field for a handful of games in 23, but the experiment did not last long. Based on his strengths, Acuna certainly has the tools to play center, but given his lack of experience, his read on the ball off the bat and the routes he takes would be extremely raw at the point in his career and would need to be worked on. Now, one thing with that, he's in double A, folks. So he's probably going to start the year in double A and get the triple A pretty quickly. That's asking a lot for a guy that's that, and he's on the 40-man roster. That's asking a lot of a young player who's 20, 21 years old uh, to learn center field and be consistent. It's easy to kind of play the in, to teach a young guy how to play the infield. Um, at he's gonna be 22 on March uh, 12th. But to, to learn a defensive position uh, this late in his progression is, is asking a lot. So probably in all likelihood, you're probably gonna see him be sort of a second baseman on this team uh, once he gets here, um, which kind of creates a, a log jam with the Mets because obviously the Mets have Jeff McNeil and it seems that this organization has sort of decided that he might not be so much in the outfield uh, this year coming up. So the future of Jeff McNeil is hinging to a certain degree on um, what happens with Acuna and Acuna's uh, development in the minor leagues also. Um, sort of it's a sort of relationship there but Angel Cunha is, Luis Angel Cunha is a very good prospect. The Mets spent a lot of money uh, bringing him in here. So he is a very talented player um, that could develop into a very interesting player. So Mets got a good one. Mets, Mets did a very good job last uh, trade deadline bringing in such very good prospects uh, from other teams. And he, he might be at the, he is the top of the list with Drew Gilbert. And he's the number three best prospect going to Mason Avenue. Uh, just to give you an idea of the next two videos, the next one will be on Drew Gilbert, who's the closest of all these players to the majors in terms of as an everyday player. 
and then seems to be the consensus number one pick, the, the consensus number one prospect for the Mets, and Jet Williams. Um, just to sort of mention this about Jet Williams, um, the word was prior to him getting drafted by the Mets that if he was a taller player, he wasn't five foot six, he would probably go on a top five prospect. So he has the ability to be a star. And Hal Kuhn, you might have the, the sort of, go back to him for a moment, he might have the sort of the ability to be an everyday player that steals a lot of bases and scores runs. But he has to get on base and he has to be able to keep that, to do something. It's going to be interesting his development because uh, the power is an untapped thing there. So he might have potential for 20 home runs. If he doesn't do well, there could be issues here. But like all young players, he's got to play, he's got to develop, and we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching this video. Of course, please subscribe to the Prospect Hut, and I'll see you later.